these free-range chickens may have the run of the place, but they also have to run the gauntlet. This farm in Leicestershire may offer chickens a five-star start in life, but a gut-busting all-you-can-eat buffet for the local fox population at the same time. They're very, very proud of their, their free-range uh, status yeah. and the welfare of the birds. Yeah, you know, yeah, as you yeah. can see, they're, they've got heat, water, yeah, plenty so of food. Space, and, the, you know, this isn't your typical no. operation. There's, you know, there's you can, you can see the floor. Yes. <laughs> Ryan Charlton, technical supremo at gun importer Highland Outdoors, has taken on this place and is making a big impact. So much so that the farmers have helped pay for new digital kit. Joining Ryan tonight is Paul Hodson, another mad keen you know fox shooter who also enjoys a thermal NV combo approach. But it's not everyone's cup of tea. Well, I don't know about you, but it's absolutely transformed my fox shooting. Yes. I mean, completely. I mean, I've gone from shooting 60 foxes a year to trebling that. Purely and simply because it's just it, you spot them out a thousand yards. Yeah, it's a game changer. There's no Completely. hiding from them. And for you know places like this where they are a, a major issue, yeah. it's it, it's very important. What do you think about people who say it's uh, slightly unsporting? I don't know many people who shoot foxes for sport. It's well, I don't. generally a pest a pest control thing. And they're, well, they're shot for a reason. That's my argument. That when people do say that, oh well, we we do it the old-fashioned way. We'll answer that. It's more sporting. I go, well, I don't do it for sport. I do it for pest control. We're here to do a job. We want to make sure that the the job is done as efficiently and as cleanly as possible. You know as well as I do with the rifles that we use, the ammunition that we use, that the fox doesn't even near the bank. Well, exactly. I mean, we, you know, go, going back onto the kit, I mean, you're, you're using your, your faithful... 6mm 284, uh, Brock and Norris, uh, custom rifle. It's, uh, it's a hell of a bit of kit, um, and it's pushing a 70 grain bullet at around about 4,000 feet a second, Happy which days. is, uh, when you're using night vision, Starlight Archer with a Starlight Dragonfly, with one of the superb Nico Sterling uh, 10 to 50 by 60 uh, Diamond Kings. Is that right? Yeah, Diamond. <laughs> Thank big, you. Big Nico, well done. I'm going to be using my, my trusty Howard uh, 243. Yep. Again, it's it's another that's come out of uh, Brock and Norris. It's, yep. it's, I, I use this rifle a lot. Night vision wise, I've um, I recently moved over to a, a digital system, so I'm using a Drone Pro 10 times. It's so far absolutely fantastic, it gives a beautiful clear picture. Yeah. Um, so I think what we need to do is walk up here and can point out the boundaries and the shoot and no shoot areas as well. Fantastic. Okay. Can't wait. Yeah, brilliant. So with plenty of kit and essentials like flasks, that'll be 12 sugars for Paul, more about his sweet tooth later, we head to the fox box. This is Excellent. probably one of the best fox boxes I've ever shot out of. The only thing that I'm a bit disappointed, he hasn't got a kettle. Now, this static approach to fox shooting is not everyone's bag. Some prefer to take the party to the fox. Both Ryan and Paul are watchers, waiters and baiters. Yeah. We often find that foxes are better at telling the time than most of humans are. And if you know or you've had information from the farm or landowner or whoever that they've seen a fox at a particular time, at a particular place, you start baiting that. Um, you can guarantee within two or three nights you'll park up or you'll come into your fox box, foxes will appear. Uh, I had a guy phone me up the other day, Sam. He said the fox is there on the trail camp at nine o'clock. I waited at nine o'clock, nothing came at six minutes past nine. He must have been putting his makeup on or something because he turned up at six minutes past nine and shot it. And he's been after that fox for months, but it's just knowing where the foxes are. It's knowing the habit. And sometimes you just get a feeling for them. As the light fades, the Pulsar thermal spotters no, deliver heat sources that offer remote glimmers of hope, only to reveal themselves as badgers and hares. This waiting lark means that with a cocktail of sugar and caffeine, the conversation drifts. Not to important matters of the day, but Jaffa cakes and sweet memories. No, Jaffa, no, Jaffa cakes are no. an old time of day snack. But they're an old kind of day snack where you don't need to drink with them because they are moist enough to eat. Yes. But so addictive that you don't ever have to store They're them more anyway. more addictive than, you know, class A drugs. Jim brought me a meat and you know the meat and one you get? Yeah. yeah that was just fine. Did you mate. just sword swallow? Yeah. It's just got, got. Johnny, Jesus. you've got to have a drink with hobnobs. Uh, hobnobs with tea, most definitely. Well, we used to call them Duncan. We, we've established that, that wagon wheels are, in fact, the, the, the biscuit to have with your, uh, your late night coffees. <laughs> I've got no idea we haven't seen any foxes. <laughs>
<laughs> After an hour of false alarms, Ryan heads off to another hot spot behind the fox box, which he has also baited with chicken pieces and liquidised dog food. Even though we have no light sources, we can't ignore the field craft. With thermal and night vision, it's never going to replace a good field craft. You know, we've come in tight down this hill, we've come in tight to the hedge, uh, nice and slow and low, to avoid being skylined and what have you. And even with all the technology we've got, you can't get away from the fact that I'm a big 18 stone bloke, I stand out. So good field craft is, is essential to, uh, to be successful when we're out um, controlling the foxes. Ryan starts to call, but a distant shot suggests Paul has had some luck. I'm going to drop Paul a text now so as he knows that we're coming. Uh, again, safety first, last and always. We've both got to know where each other is all the time. So we'll drop Paul a text and uh, see what he's got for us. It's a healthy looking dog fox. Fox down, well done. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. 178 yards is what I've lasered it at, so decent shot. Nicely um, done. In this wind especially, it's, uh, it's quite a nice crosswind that I was, but to be honest with you, the 6 mil 284 didn't need to hold over or do anything with wind drift, it's just that kind of distance, point and shoot. Yeah. Job done. Uh, well done mate, we'll, we'll, we'll sit up for a little bit longer, have a coffee and see if we can't add some more to the tally. Mm, be nice. Thanks Chief. You're welcome. Mate. Ryan has an excellent relationship with the farmers and they know he's not just a fox shooter. He's that other pair of eyes, good for farm security, animal welfare, as well as saving their money by keeping their livestock safe from harm.